Chief Executive Office of the NNPCL, Melek Hiari, says President Bola Tinubu has ordered palliative succussion effects of subsidy removal. And NLC says no going back on the proposed nationwide strike. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, Melek Yari, has disclosed that President Bola Tinubu has ordered the putting in place of palliatives to cushion the effect of removal of fuel subsidy on Nigerians. He also insisted that there was no going back on subsidy removal as it was quite apparent that Nigeria can no longer afford the subsidy payment. The NNPCL boss, who disclosed this after a meeting behind closed doors with members of the National Working Committee of the ruling All Progressive Congress at the party's National Secretariat in Abuja on Thursday, said the NNPCL won't continue to be the sole importer of oil in the country. Uh, in the country. Chiari also confirmed ongoing rehabilitation of the nation's four refineries, saying one of them will start operating this year. Now, joining us to discuss this is Kat Onunuju. He is a public affairs analyst. And also joining us later will be Jide Ologun, who is a, a legal practitioner. Uh, Mr. Onunuju, so good to have you join us. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Um, the, the, the saying that, you know, we always put the cart before the horse in this country uh, seems to be the case that we're finding ourselves in since last week, Tuesday. Many have queried why... Um, the subsidy removal was done in the way and manner it was, as opposed to processes put in place and then, of course, rolling it out in phases. But then, of course, you're a politician. You probably understand better why the presidency uh, must have gone about it this way. What are your thoughts? Well, thank you very much for bringing this up. I will tell you straight up that uh, this uh, APC administration has never done anything properly in the past eight years since they've been to power. Uh, they've not conducted elections well. Uh, they've not uh, run the country well. They've not kept the economy well. Uh, the GDP has fallen very, very much. It was an excess of uh, 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 550 billions. But today, uh, after eight years, it fell down to about 423. So a lot has not worked well. And now they talked about removing the subsidy. We believe when they challenged the removal of the subsidy as proposed by President Goodluck Jonathan, at that particular time of challenge, there were palliatives that were released by the President Goodluck administration. Where are the palliatives for today? If you remove the subsidy, everybody saying, uh, all the candidates say they remove subsidy. But they had talked about how they would do it. Some say they would do it in stages. A lot of them said if they would do it, they provide palliatives. Where are the bosses for the workers? Where are the ameliorating things that will actually bring down the very harsh effects of this particular policy on the poor? We've not talked about all that. I don't understand what's behind this. But don't forget, since 2016, the NMPC had been the exclusive importer of petrol. So if we say the subsidy is fraudulent, look to NMPC. If we say that we have been given our crew, our oil imported into the Nigeria, subsidized by Nigeria taxpayers' money, and it is being the mainstay of economies like that of Cameroon, and economies like that of Chad, economies like that of Niger, economies like that of... Uh, uh, been a republic. How come we didn't know this all along? We knew this all along. And that was why President Goodluck sought to remove the subsidy. These people who now said no, they will go against it and are now seeing the reasons in that decision. Did they think about the palliatives and the other instrumentations that had to come in? I don't want the subsidy to stay. I want it to be removed. But you don't just remove it. You do that and you plan, you bring in the palliatives. When you take it out, 
there are things you must bring to ameliorate the gaps it will create. It is because of that lack of planning that we are complaining. Not that it's a bad thing to remove subsidy. No, it's a good thing to remove subsidy, but you must remove it in plan, in understanding that once you have a tick in the cost of transportation, that will affect everything. I am happy that the government is finally deciding to go away from their sustained activity in the energy market. For me, I consider that to be a distortion. I really like it. Buhari said earlier, there is no subsidy, just a scam. I agree with him. Now that you say you're removing it, how have you planned to take care of the effect of this removal, which we have not seen? And don't you get the theme? Subsidy has not been removed. If it has been removed, the market will be free. There is a lot of impurities in the pricing system that we have. What are you telling me? All you've done is you do no more give the subsidy payments to those businessmen who were there. You are not collecting it yourself only at NMPC. We need to look at the cost. Mm. The cost we've seen now is not representative of the truth. Okay. 550 Naira is not the true cost of petrol when they land in Nigeria. Let us interrogate this mathematics presented to us currently by NMPC Limited. Talking about I don't agree with them. Talking about interrogating the magic or the mathematics, as you put it, um, the, the president had spoken, um, he put out a lot of statements. Most importantly, he had talked about the fact that all those who are responsible for monies that are missing, um, those who have been involved in the corruption in the oil sector, especially for fuel subsidy, need to be brought to book immediately. And he sounded more like this has to be done um, as soon as possible. Now, looking at, of course, the administration is still very fresh, by the way. Uh, it's barely a week old. Um, do they have what it takes? Because again, let's do a quick flashback to the Buhari administration. When President Buhari, former President Buhari, came into power, a lot of people rolled on the body language, the sternness. He talked tough. A lot of people, you know, um, felt that if the president at the time sneezed, the whole country would catch cold. But eight years down the line, we don't necessarily have anything great to say in terms of the fight against corruption. So. If this president is talking tough as we speak, do you see any change taking place anytime soon? And how do you think that that will happen? Being that there is a cabal, as we all know, um, that is running this particular sector. Well, uh, that is a very loaded question. I do not think uh, President Bola Tinibu has the way we to right now to act autonomously because of the circumstances of his come about. Since he knows that those who installed him may look up to him to show loyalty to what they have done for him, I do not think that he has yet gotten the autonomy of thought and of person to act against them. Because who are you talking about? Melekiari is there. Melekari was in charge since 2016 of the NMPC when the NMPC became the sole importer of this petrol. Melekari was also there when the crude was being stolen and then he took the complaint of Mr. Peter Obi who said that the thieves of the crude that we have known for the past three months had any accreditation to our sovereign account and in government. And it is true. When Mr. Peter B stated that it was investigated and it was found to be true, the people who were stealing the crew are in government. Where are they? They are not the Ministry of Health. They are not the Ministry of Communication. They are at NMPC. So how can Mr. Tinivu be tough on the people who were part of those who brought into power acrobatically, and the people are still the people we believe to be the thieves. No, he would not fight them immediately. He will take his time because the way we think 
You have to be very careful. If you receive a stolen property, you don't start making noise before those who gave it to you will tell the police the property you say has to stay yes, see who has it. So we need to play it gently. If you look at through these crashes, there are two war battles. One, the battle of those who for the past eight years have pinned Nigeria down. Secondly, the battle against the processes that brought in the current president, which is what you've seen in the court. So you need to be very careful. A lot of us have to also be very mindful of that. We have now achieved the first, which is removing Buhari and his band of impunity protagonists. And that includes Mr. Mele Kriari. Before Tinibu can do anything tangible, Mr. Mele Kriari must leave the enemy. Are you still there, Ms. Ananaju? I think we lost that connection for they a bit. Stole. And okay. then you know that they stole. I believe, I believe that the only way for Mr. Tinibu to go about this thing, he must ask Mele Kiari and those who ran the oil operations for the past eight years to leave. It is only when they have left that you cannot bring in neutral people that will be able to interrogate the past. You cannot But, but how do you tell them to leave if the probing the doesn't dogs, begin? The, the probing does have to begin. I, I mean, you can't just tell them to leave. Telling them to leave doesn't solve the problem. If there is a cabal running the system, then there has to be a probe into that particular system telling the man to go is not enough i mean let's let's also do a flashback to professor Pandey. where is professor Pandey? so asking a man to live does that solve the problem well why i'm telling you this you oh i think that um, we're having a little connection problem there with uh, mr catch can you hear me now have to leave can you I hear can me? hear you. Can you hear me? All right, go ahead. Yes, yes, please. You cannot ask the people you are accusing of having stolen our patronage to stay in court while you want to probe them. No, you must get them to go. Then you put brand new people, then you start interrogations. Melek Yari cannot stay at NMPC for Tinibu to do any interrogation. It's not going to work. He must leave him and his band of people who have run this system so we can get fresh people and then ask some questions. But you can know the same people that have committed the offense, the same people that ran an NPC and did not contribute 10 naira to the federation account. You now want to ask them to be the judge over their own interrogation. It mm. is not going to work. Let them go so that we'll be able to interrogate our past. Let's talk about palliatives because I remember th this word was a big thing uh, during the COVID um, season, um, palliatives became one of the buzzwords. But here we are again talking about palliatives. Apparently, the National Assembly um, and, of course, the PDP presidential candidate, um, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, uh, are some of the people who have called for President Tinubu to put in place palliatives. I go back to my earlier question of putting the cart before the horse. Now, in Nigeria, if you follow the trajectory, there has been subsidy removal for diesel and kerosene. Where's that money that we saved on diesel and kerosene? And how, how easy uh, has it been for that? Again, uh, just as you mentioned earlier on, uh, if we're taking out subsidy or stopping the payment of subsidy for petroleum, are we saving money? How much are we saving? And also, Melakiari has told us that the refineries are going to be up and running at least one before the end of this year and i'm thinking to myself why did, were all of these processes not put in place before now and i mean because these things would have one way or the other ameliorated i'm wondering they could have ameliorated the sufferings of nigerian as opposed to waiting to take out give us this statement and of course allow us to go through the whole drama and then seek palliatives this is where i'm going what sort of palliatives do you think the government can give to Nigerians as we speak that can ameliorate the sufferings? Because transportation has quadrupled, not doubled, not tripled, quadrupled. Um, and of course, one way or the other, there will be a rippling effect on the economy and the cost of leaving. Um, what exactly do you think the Tinubu government will bring to the average Nigerian as palliatives that would suffice? 
Well, you're talking about palliative. I will tell you to forget it. If you want to talk about how palliative works in Nigeria, look to the COVID era and how this particular APC administration ran it. There is no need trying to ask them to prove themselves. You still have basically the same set of people who I think I will have our mindset in a better country. And to do that, we must start all over. Leave those people. They have failed. They've not been able to do anything for the past eight years. Think about bringing fresh people to start asking new questions and try to organize, reorganize. When you, when you say bring new people, where are they bringing the new people from? Mars? Zimbabwe? Kenya? I'm, I'm just wondering. Because we all have been... We, eight years. I, I'm, I, sorry, I, I'm sorry, Mr. I Lillian. do not expect anything good Let, from those who have ruined our life in the past eight years. Yes, but when you say we should bring new people, where are we bringing them from? Mars? Kenya? Zimbabwe? Maybe... I'm, I'm wondering, because just as you said at the beginning, this is an APC handing over to an APC government. What new people are we talking about, and, and where are they coming from? Good. The APC, in the years of Buhari, was the APC in which Buhari employed nepotism as policy of government. It did not mean that there weren't other Nigerians who were good from other parts of Nigeria. Buhari mismanaged Nigeria's diversity, and I will tell you that. What I remember him for, fundamentally deceitful, in managing our diversity. So, I believe Tinibu knows that our problem was Buhari did not manage Nigeria's diversity properly. And if he wants to move forward, he should understand Nigeria is a heterogeneously diverse society. And that's it. You have these good people everywhere. You have seen the primary reason why Buhari failed was because Buhari embraced nepotism as policy. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, because uh, uh, now that you said we should just jettison the idea of palliative because of how we saw it run under the Buhari administration, but then Buhari is no longer president. Now it's a Bola Met Tinubu. But let's talk about our refineries, which is very important. Um, during the inauguration or the commissioning of the Dangote refinery, it got a lot of people talking. Uh, many people were very positive as to the fact that uh, there would be uh, some form of competition, um, you know, with, you know, the emergence of the Dangote refinery. But that competition would only happen if we had our refineries up and running. But then last year, if not the year before, uh, a, tri a trillion plus naira was set aside for turnaround maintenance of these refineries, people are still being paid salaries, but these refineries are not refining anything. Now, Melikiari is telling us that at least one of these refineries will be up and running by the end of the year. Why not all of them? Why one? Well, Melikiari is just a, a story man. Uh, if we couldn't do those things since he was there, he can't do it now. Anybody believing Melikiari's words is just being foolish. <laughs> so I don't really think it's, it's right that you mentioned it. As I told you earlier, if Tinibu wants to work, he must remove all those people who were brought there in the name of nepotism and try to assemble an assemblage of Nigerians from a diverse population. And that's what a lot of us believe. By the time he starts embracing the work that way in view of understanding that Nigeria is a diverse society. Those who have been protagonists and champions of nepotism will start to raise an army to fight him. This is a very basic game. Hmm. And that you cannot change it. So you cannot start bringing palliative to give to the hands of those who run palliatives under the law system vis-a-vis -vis under the COVID regime, those are not people you need. Before you can move forward, talk to labor. Ask labor, what do they think? Ask them, how would they want palliatives to be done? Mm -hmm. Since all of us have agreed, including labor people, that the government's active distortion of the energy market should stop. And it should stop. Then let labor also say something, because you're not going to put palliative distribution in the hands of those who handled palliatives during COVID-19. No. 
It is very, very important that you now talk to labor. It is very, very, very pertinent that anything you do, for that thing you do to work, you must carry the people along. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me, I, I think we're being joined by Jideo Logun. Let's go to Jideo Logun quickly and uh, take his thoughts. Uh, Mr. Logun, let me Talk ask. to labor. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come back to you, but let me go to Jideo Logun. Uh, Mr. Logun, there are several things that if we're looking to other countries who have taken out subsidy or stopped subsidizing petrol in their countries, um, let's take, for example, I mean, I've heard people say, well, we need to start cycling. We need to look for measures to ameliorate our sufferings because transportation has, like I said, quadrupled. But then you see in those countries, they have systems that are put in place that can cushion the effects of subsidy removal, like having electricity, stable electricity, good road networks, and all kinds of things to make sure that the people don't, I mean, even a stable economy, because you see the truth is, our economy is a mess. And even if you were to say, well, let's increase minimum wage, everybody does not work on minimum wage, right? There are people who work for private companies. And can all these companies, including government, afford a rise in minimum wage? Uh, again, like I said, can these palliatives really work for us going forward? Talk about palliative. You are talking about what you put in place to minimize the suffering that the people will experience because of your implementing a policy or because of a disaster, for instance, like the COVID-19. And it means you are making life less stressful for them. Mm -hmm. But in this case now, Nigeria has not even been proactive. The subsidy has been removed suddenly. The argument is not that subsidy should not be removed. When you look at the scam surrounding the subsidy gate, or how are you going to remove it, that you will not add to the excruciating pain that the citizens are going through. You just mention the case of electricity, for instance. You can imagine having to run generator in your office, in your home, <clears throat> in your factory, for instance. How yes, are you going to Let me call you like I'm on television. Let mm -hmm. me call you. Transportation. These are several questions that are on the minds of the people. But having said that, I did a deep analysis of the situation on ground. The point is that the federal government does not even have the money for these so-called palliatives, except if they are going to borrow money again. Because don't forget that right now, we spend about 90% of our revenue to start this day. Our total indebtedness is about 77 trillion naira. And even NSNPC is claiming that this subsidy we are talking about, the federal government is still going there on subsidy. Um, um, Mr. Anuju, can you please mute yourself because we're hearing you. Go ahead, Mr. Logan. There's a breaking news now that the digital industrial court in Abuja has stopped NLC from proceeding on that strike action on Wednesday. And the matter before the court has been adjourned, I think, till June 19th. So, and that gives the federal government, for instance, more opportunity to dialogue and negotiate with the stakeholders. Definitely, this decision has brought more hardship mm -hmm. upon Nigerians. But should subsidy go? The answer is yes. When you consider one fact that bothers me a lot, that this same NNPC that we are talking about, that came up with this subsidy under the coinage of under recovery, was established on the 1st of April 1977 to create Commonwealth for Common Good. And until recently, NNPC even remitted zero to the Federation account. And if you look at the international level, right now as we speak, some neighboring countries are adjusting their PMS prices because reportedly, despite the fact that the stakeholder in Nigeria, talking about NNPC and those who manage our oil and gas resources, they inflate the liters of petrol they claim we consume daily, they inflate the figures of the under recovery, otherwise known as subsidy. And after claiming this from the government, smugglers still smuggle these products to neighboring countries. So we are, we are, you know, we are engaging our problems in the nation 
substantially and in substantive manner right now. The pain will come, but the government also has to find a way of engaging the citizens and major stakeholders that they cushion the impact. And I can let you know, uh, citizens are beginning to adjust. And like I said, what could have really held the federal government down has been prevented by the decision of the National Industrial Court today that that strike be put on hold, except NLC wants to disobey the court's order. You know, that, and that is where we are now. But talking about palliatives, is Nigerian government even known for providing palliatives? Recently, we read about the $800 million that the federal government secured from the World Bank as part of its post-subsidy palliative scheme. And when you talk about post-subsidy, it means you are going to remove it, then after that, you start attending to the people. It's not the best way to go. What has happened to all our amenities that should be in place, good transportation and everything? And that money is supposed to give about 5,000 Naira. It's about 50 million Nigerians. So what will 5,000 Naira do in an economy where the exchange rate, the black market for dollar is about 770 Naira? You see, these are issues. So we have serious Mr. Logu, can you uh, hear me? problem can in you our hands. Can you hear me? Um, actually, the amount of money that was gotten by the World Bank or from the World Bank, if you calculated it, let's say, to 200, 200 million Nigerians, you'll come to, I think, about 12,000 Naira per person. Um, and I'm wondering what 12,000 Naira can do per person for one day. And that, that, that is what we are saying. In fact, the calculation is that the money will be disbursed to about 10 million households. And when you do an extensive calculation, that brings it to about 50 million Nigerians, not even the 220, who are considered to be most vulnerable. So how do you identify those who are vulnerable? I am vulnerable. I just mentioned it now. I need to buy fuel to power my generator at home in the office. I need to fuel the vehicles to do my business. I need good roads. I need, you know, so these are issues. And you see, the big pain here is that you are making about 3.35 trillion naira. For subsidy in the first half of the year you know it's 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 really it, it's amazing you know so it's it, it's really and we must deal with this problem once and for all and by extension what some stakeholders are saying is that go after the oil teams why are our refineries not working fix the substantive problems that we have and i hope that is what this government is out to achieve and let me say this According to the uh, Petroleum Industry Act, subsidy has been removed. And that is why the president in his statement said subsidy is gone. But the ripple effects and reactions is what we are facing. So whether we waited until the end of June or not, subsidy in Nigeria should be dealt with. And all the major presidential candidates mm -hmm. promised to remove subsidy. So how we go about it now? It's a different ball game entirely, mm. you know. But those who plague the nation with their greed and wickedness must be dealt with. The all thieves, because when you talk about 3.35 trillion naira for subsidy in the first half of the year 2023, who are the people who are enjoying it? We know that NNPC at the point in time became the sole importer of PMS, and one of the arguments now is that you have to deregulate that approach. You know, independent marketers can now step in to source their fuel locally and internationally. And the government, I believe, is pressing towards having a, a single, a unified foreign exchange uh, regime. So these are issues. Our economy needs a serious revamping, doubtlessly. And we hope that this government will be able to pull through and walk the talk. But like okay. I said, the fear that was in the air, the, the proposed strike that was supposed to start on Wednesday and the National Industrial Court has put that on hold. Yeah. You know, so that the matter before the court can be dealt with. So okay. and that is where we are right now. Well let's hope that let's this is to hoping that um, something good comes out of this. But unfortunately we have to wrap things up here. Uh Jide Logun is a legal practitioner, Katra Onunuju is a public affairs analyst. But the conversation continues after this break when we talk about the intended uh, strike action and of course the legality surrounding it. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>